All right, we're going to continue today with more signal flow, buses, groups, order of execution, and all that sort of stuff uh, to reinforce concepts from last week and also introduce a couple of new concepts. And really, I just want to get these ideas into your head so that um, everything is uh, you know, making sense. So what I have here, uh, I, I have a lot of code prepared today because I was I was uh, running through some things and and I, it was the kind of thing where I, there's too many things I can mess up if I if I type it out live. So don't feel like you need to copy what's on the screen. It's I think that's just going to end up distracting you. So I'll just walk through it with you. Um, what what I have here is basically a recap of what we covered last week in a very simple version. So I reset the. I, I call this this method new bus allocators, which just says forget about any buses you've allocated. Start at the beginning. And then I am allocating a bus. I know it looks like it's a bus, but this A actually means audio. So I'm allocating an audio rate bus. That's why I've called it a bus. So it's bus.audio. I can call it whatever I want. You all know this. Um, so, so that's the first thing that happens is we just set aside a two-channel bus. And then I have two synth defs, uh, a source and an effect. The first one is just uh, a, uh, a sine wave. Uh, a a two-channel sine wave. It's got like a slight detuning thing. You, you're starting to figure out my recipe for just synth depths that I just whip up on, on you know, off the cuff here. So it's a two-channel sine wave which is being um, uh, enveloped by this percussive envelope. And this zero is the done action, so this envelope doesn't free the synth at the end. It just hangs out, and then whenever a new trigger is received, which happens every two seconds, it just restarts the envelope. So we hear this little percussive tone every two seconds. We write it out to uh, an audio bus. And I know this, this might sort of looks a little confusing at first glance because we have an audio rate output UGen. But then I, I'm just declaring a control rate argument to represent the bus index. So with that, that way we can change this whenever we want. We can route the signal somewhere else. But it is always going to be sending out an audio rate signal. But we, we can use a control rate argument to say which audio rate bus index to use. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it's just, I, I was looking at this and I was like, this this looks, yeah, a little confusing. So anyway, that's that's the generative synth def, and then we have this one, which is a reverb effect. It reads an audio rate signal in from an arbitrary audio rate bus index. It's two channels, right? Because we want to be consistent with all our our buses and signal size, right? So all of this is two channel stuff, and then I am sending that two channel signal through uh, an instance of free verb. This is like the quickest, easiest, simplest reverb if you just want a reverb effect. It doesn't sound amazing, but um, it sounds fine. And this is a monophonic one, one channel in, one channel out reverb, but because we're passing a two channel signal, it will multi channel expand and we'll have two uh, copies of free verb one for the left channel, one for the right channel. And then this also gets written out to um, a bus. So we run that code, and now we're ready to instantiate the synths. So, uh, and before we do, I want to open up the scope and view a bunch of channels. Uh, I don't think we need to see eight. I think six would be fine. Because remember, these two at the top are hardware outputs. The next two are hardware inputs. And then the next two are, are the first two private audio buses. And that's, that's what um, a bus is referring to. It's starting at index four and two channels. Uh, and let's make this so we can see that. What's on the what's on the server, and let's open the meters as well. All right, very nice. So we make our source synth, and I have it playing out to our audio bus, and so we see it on channels four and five. We don't hear it, we don't see anything on the meters, but we can see it here on the on the node tree. And then the last thing we need to get right here is to add the effect such that it is further downstream than the uh, audio, the, the generative synth. And so that's what we're doing. We're saying, make this synth. Here are its inputs and outputs. And so it's reading from the audio bus and sending to hardware. Its target is the source synth. That's this thing. So this node right here is our target. And the action is add after. So it'll get added immediately after. And there we go. So we have the correct ordering here. And we've established a path to hardware. And so we see the dry signal here and the reverberant signal here. 
So this is kind of my, my recap of, of last week. Uh, right? And just, just to, to be clear, if we add this and then uh, you know, do the wrong, a, 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 an incorrect add action, this is going to put the reverb above the sine wave and uh, the, there's a miscommunication here. So it, it just doesn't, doesn't work this way. Okay, uh, in all of, like, all of my lectures and tutorial videos when I talk about server architecture and signal flow, I usually focus pretty exclusively on audio buses because we're dealing with audio signals. We want to generate those audio signals and do audio processing effects. But there's also a bunch of control buses and those function almost exactly the same way as audio buses and they can be really useful. Options dot num control bus channels. The default number of control buses is very large, 16,384. And on the scope, we can look at them by switching over to control buses. And right now they're just empty. But the main difference is that you write control signals to these buses and read control signals from these buses. So they just, um, you know, in order to get signal here, we use out.kr and it's going to write some kr signal, whatever it is. Um, let's just go ahead and and write one right now. We'll, we'll even use just like function.play um, to be very quick. So we'll say out.kr, let's write to bus, I don't know, three, uh, a sine wave running at one hertz, and that's it. There you go. And you know, we, can, we can scale this however we want. Uh, and if we, one, one difference, again, this is, I, I think my understanding is correct here and complete, but it may not be 100% complete. Uh, control buses don't get wiped at the end of a control cycle. So if I get rid of this synth called X, the value stays on the bus. So I can even say, uh, well, okay, I, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how I'm supposed to access this bus without a bus object. So um, let's, let's do this, uh, let's do, um, uh, b equals bus dot control s4. So I've just allocated uh, buses 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then I'm going to say b dot set n, uh, the array 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is, this is another important difference between control buses and audio buses, is that we can just manually set bus values from the language. For example, I can say, oh, let's, let's, um, let's go ahead and reset this bus, bus allocation again. So we'll take this down here and uh, I'll, I'll keep this here, but uh, okay, so I'm resetting the bus counter. This, this method applies to audio buses and control buses, just so you know. And then we allocated a, a single control bus bus b, so it starts at index 0 and it has one bus. So we can say b dot value 0.2, right? There we go, 0.4, right? 6, negative 0.6. Uh, we can even say like 500 and off it goes. <laughs> we, you know, we can't, can't see it anymore, but um, you know, there's, no, there's no arbitrary limit to a number that can be on a bus here. So. Uh, we can reset that. So why, why is this useful? So let's go back to our example here. And uh, one, way we can, one way we can take advantage of control buses is, uh, for example, let's go to our uh, sine wave uh, synth def. Oh, you know what? We'll copy. I'm going to try to save everything here. Uh, and we will add a variable called freak, get rid of this thing here. And freak is going to be in.kr, reading from some uh, bus, whatever it is, one channel. Okay? So we're saying freak is, is actually getting its information from a control bus. Yeah, from a control bus. And, oh, we should, let's go ahead and... Uh, Make a control bus. 
one channel, because we just have this one signal representing frequency. And then, uh, let's grab these. And so what we want to do here is uh, just just for just to show you what happens if we just do this, uh, we're just going to get nothing here because uh, well okay I should be uh, we can say something like this so we're actually reading from control bus zero right that's that's what K bus is it's just control bus zero one channel and its current value is zero so the value of freak is zero, and I think I've done this right. It's just uh, I thought one of these would be okay. Well, you know, it doesn't matter. Let's let's do it um, the right way here. Say LFO synth. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, I need to make. A, I think I need to make another synth def here. Um, okay, so. Control rate sine wave, we'll just say, I don't know, eight cycles per second, going from 200 to 400. So control rate out. Uh, there we go. Okay. We got another synth def here. And so now we should see stuff happen on the control rate buses here. Oh, and I, I already have my sine wave there. So <laughs> let's start. Let's start from scratch here. So there's the LFO. And then we got our source signal. It's going out to hardware. Right? So let's set the output to actually be this audio bus. Right. And if we go back here, now it's on bus four and five. Previously, it was on one and two. Right here on four and five, and then we just need to make uh, this reverb. Um, no. Okay. So now we have a little bit more of a complex thing going on here. We have this. Uh, LFO, right? and it's just writing its signal to a bus. And the advantage here is that it's not baked into the generative synth. It's actually this independent thing, you know, writing its signal to a bus so that other processes could use it. So if we had another synth def, you know, like a sawtooth wave, we could uh, read that signal in, <clears throat> make this a little quieter, and um, let's just do times 1.5 or something. Right? We're just going to take whatever whatever value is on the bus. We're going to scale it up by 1.5. And then what we can do is uh, over here. So its input is going to be the same control bus, and the output is going to be the audio bus. We got to make sure this goes in the right spot on the tree as well. Um, so we can say the target can be, you know, the the sine wave, and just put it right after it or before it. Right? It just has to be before the reverb, basically, and and after the LFO. Yeah, it's out of sync because the envelopes are independent. Right? It just happens. It just wherever I happen to create that synth, that's when the impulse generator starts. But they're both using you know, the, the real-time signal from the control bus. Okay, so that's that's one option uh, for how to use control buses. And uh, let me uh, show you a sort of a different approach. So let's get rid of a few things. Let's go back some a couple steps here. Take away that. 
let's uh, take away this, just get some of this stuff cleaned up. <coughs> Actually, let's, let's even forget about the LFO. Go back to this version where we just have the frequency argument. Like this. And what do I need? Freak not defined. Oh, it needs a slash. Yeah, okay. So this should be back to where we started. Let me just make sure. Okay, good. All right, as an alternative um, to uh, using in.kr, which is what we just did, we actually already have the ability to pipe a control signal into this uh, sign synthef by virtue of the fact that we have declared a control rate argument. Now we're used to interacting with this argument using set commands. Right? That's, I mean, that's, we can just, you all know how those work. So we can say, right? same idea. Uh, so here's here's something we'll do. Uh, we'll we'll just um, I'm just gonna make a a non synth def uh, signal here. Uh, we we are gonna use this bus, and we're gonna say out dot kr k bus sine os dot a, uh, kr excuse me two hundred to oh uh, it's a frequency of eight. Something like this. And this will go on. I see that so the buses don't get cleared, but it doesn't really matter because we're just going to. Well, first of all, let's just make sure it's working. And interesting. App.kr. Um, Oh, okay, right. X range can't cross zero. Oh, yeah. uh, although, why? Missing something here. KR. Okay. Uh, not sure why that wasn't working a second ago. But yeah, now we have sine wave doing its thing. Uh, and I'm going to give it, I'm going to uh, free this and give it suitable frequency values. OK, so it doesn't look like much here, but it's ranging from 200 to 800, right? So it's just way off the screen or something, right? OK, and we don't have an explicit in in this sign synth, but we do have a control rate argument. So um, I shouldn't have run that. I think that's just messed up my buses. So we'll just put this again. So let's, let's uh, make this and make this. And then instead of uh, setting it to a number, which, you know, still works, we're going to say kbus dot as map. Yeah. So the is going to be We've done the same thing that we just did, uh, except instead of using in.kr and explicitly mapping, you know, having those talk to each other over a bus, we're setting the value of, here, let me stop this for a second. Yeah, holds that value, whatever it happened to left, left off. Uh, this, this expression evaluates to actually a symbol. It's the symbol C0, which is the zero control bus. And that just tells this synth to map this control rate argument to that bus. Just get your values from that bus. And because this is a control rate argument, it's a control rate bus, it's just pulling values at the control rate. So whenever we play something to that bus, right? yeah, so we can free that, make it faster. 
we can even give this its own arguments here. Let's say freak.kr right, 12. And then we can say, oops. Right. Uh, sorry, it needs to be freak 200. Oh, FM right, at the control rate. No. Um, let's let's go one step further. And we'll, uh, free that. Uh, right. So we've given ourselves the ability to determine how fast we re-trigger the envelope, because now we can set that frequency ourselves. Uh, oh, I, I didn't get rid of my reverb, so we'll just do it again. All right, so we have uh, we have this now, and we can map the frequency input there. Set the frequency. And so, of course, we can do stuff like this. Right, our impulse frequency. We can just like set it manually, right, uh, to be. Yeah. And the, the release is whatever the default release time is. So if the impulse has come too quickly, then it's just going to basically be held open. You know? uh, but then we can also, uh, you know, map, make another bus. And we'll just do that. And then say source.set uh, imp freak uh, imp bus dot as map. So we've now mapped the impulse control to this bus, which is empty. But we can just set the bus manually. We can say imp bus dot value 0.5. So now it's, its value is coming from this bus, and it's mapped to, from that bus. We can change this wherever we like. And we could also like you know copy this and say, OK, make me a imp. And this is going to go out to imp bus. And it'll be a slow moving sine wave that ranges from 0.1 to 0.5. Um, let's do, that's a little too slow. We'll make it go up to like 4 or something. So, so the, the idea is like the, the uh, one of these arguments can be just mapped to a constant value, or you can map it to a bus. And then once it's mapped to a bus, you know, that bus can also be set to a constant value, or you can write some control rate signal to that bus, right? And so, you know, you, you, can't, you can't ever really unmap from a bus without having to provide another value. Like, let's say, you know, it's, it's mapped to a bus. And you want to just disconnect that mapping. Well, it needs some value, right? It, it, it can't. It's a, if it, so. You, the way to do that is to just provide some constant value to detach it from the bus. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So I um. A little bit of a mess, right? Just a lot of stuff happening. <laughs> this, is, this is sort of a little bit verging on like live coding here. Uh, the, 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 it, the reason it's not really live coding is because if I want to make a change to the recipe of one of these synth depths, I have to stop and re-add it and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but that's a, that's a, 
sort of the, the gist of control buses is that you can use them for these kinds of purposes. Does that make sense? A little bit. Let me, I've got another example, which uh, is a little bit more involved, but also a little bit more prepared. And what I want to do is use uh, these bus concepts to emulate being at an analog synthesizer. So you've got an LFO, a trigger, an envelope, a VCO, VCF, VCA, and a little like, we're going to pretend it's a spring reverb, but it's, it's not. So let's forget about the buses for a second. And let me just show you these synth thefts. So I am thinking very modularly with these synth thefts. So I'm making them very minimal. Yeah, uh, and, and I'm trying to sort of have everything range in some nominal zero to one range. So some of the frequency values look kind of strange. Uh, so here's, here's our LFO module. And all we have is a, a sine wave running at the control rate. It has an initial frequency of one. It's unipolar, so it ranges from zero to one. And out it goes uh, to a bus. And, and so let me just, let's look at these buses first. So we reset the bus counter. And then bus is uh, an event. An event is um, syntactically created with this empty enclosure of parentheses. And that allows us to do stuff like this, where we can store items in the event using this, uh, we sort of, as if this were like a method or something. Um, and I've, I've kind of learned to really enjoy this. So, uh, so now we can say, you know, bus.lfo, and that is going to return a, a one-channel control bus. Bus.trig is another one-channel control bus with index one instead of zero. Bus.vcf, that's an audio bus. It start, it's got index five and it's got one channel. You can do this however you want. I mean, you can make a separate, unique environment variable name for each bus. You can store them in an array. There's like 17 ways to do it. It's just, uh, this, this way I like, it just looks nice to me. But you know, it's, however you want to define, name, and store the various buses you're going to use, it's, it's really just up to you. OK, so we have the LFO synth. And, and the, so we're using one of the benefits of this argument naming style, where we can actually put some expression in as the default value. So this just means, I think, that this LFO will, if we just create it without specifying anything, um, it's going to automatically write its signal to the LFO bus. Uh, and then we have a trigger module. It just spits out impulses at a frequency to the trigger bus. This is an envelope module. It's just a percussive envelope shape with a, a knob for attack, a knob for release. Um, it has a control rate argument for the trigger. So initially, this is something that you would expect we would just set it to 1, set it back to 0 in order to trigger the envelope. But eventually, we will map it to to the trigger bus so that the trigger controls, you know, triggers the envelope. Um, we also have the ability to scale the envelope down, right? So instead of going from zero to one, it can be a little bit lower. Here's our oscillator. It's a sawtooth. And the way I, I don't I don't really know what the sort of best practice is here, but this is what seemed to work well and make sense for me is we give the sawtooth oscillator a frequency argument which we initially conceptualize as being between 0 and 1, uh, with 1 is like the highest the knob can go, and 0 is the lowest the knob can go. But we need to turn those into meaningful digital values. So I'm mapping using linexp from this linear range from 0 to 1 onto customizable parameters. So 0 translates to 20, 1 translates to 20,000, and it's an exponential mapping. And it goes out to its special little VCO bus. Here's our v VCF. And I'm using this Moog filter primarily because it responds a little bit more nicely to fast changes in its cutoff frequency. I was, I was using LF, uh, LPF, but it was like clicking a bunch because when the envelope was changing quickly. But this one seems nice. And it's, it's also consistent with our conceptualization of this being a, <laughs> uh, an analog synth. So yeah, just signal comes in. Same idea with the cutoff frequency. It just exists on a range from 0 to 1, but we map it arbitrarily from something to something. VCA, very simple. We just read a signal in. Uh, this is an audio rate signal. 
and we scale it by a control rate amplitude argument. We can set this manually. We could also map this to a bus. And then finally, the reverb, which is just uh, takes the signal in from the VCA bus and mixes it with a low-pass filtered G-verb, which is a combo that I like to use. So just to draw the signal flow real quick, so we have our LFO, and who knows where that's going to go. Um, we have our trigger signal, we have our envelope, and the trigger is being used to, you know, re re reinitiate the envelope. Um, we have our uh, VCO, um, and this is being fed into a VCF. Right? So the oscillator is getting fed into the filter. Uh, and then this is being fed into a VCA. And the envelope is modulating the VCA. And so the, the VCA has some, some uh, you know, we can draw a little envelope here. And this is the actual signal coming in. And so here's like the modulator input, and this is the actual source. And then this goes out to our reverb. And we can also use the same envelope to modulate the, um, you know, the cutoff frequency, the VCF. Uh, and this LFO could be used for a number of things. We could patch it into the VCO to control its uh, frequency. We could patch it in, you know, there's a bunch of options here. Right? But this, this is sort of the idea. So in, in terms of uh, order of execution, we need the VCO to be above the VCF, which is above the VCA, which is above the reverb. And probably these, these three should just be like at the top of the node tree. Just any, I, th I think it makes sense to put like control signals at the top, right? just so that. You could just make a group with the geometry. Yeah, we could. We could just make a group. Um, but the, uh, and I, I guess that probably the trig also needs to be uh, above the end. Um, that's the other consideration. Um, so that's roughly what we're imagining here. So this is like our, our setup code. So we run that. And we've created all of our buses and added all of our synth thefts. And then here is what I have done in terms of adding, creating all these synths and making sure they're in the right order, uh, is that I'm just, I'm using this convenience method synth.after. And what you, you provide it with a node, like another synth, and then which synth to create after it. So we basically we create the LFO synth and call it tilde LFO. And then we put the trig synth immediately after that. And then the end synth meter after that, and then VCO, VCF, VCA, reverb. Right? And when I run this, I, um, I think it's going to make sound immediately. But we haven't, as you can see, we're not putting any arguments in here. Uh, so, so we're just relying on defaults, and there are no bus connections. Um, just, well, I guess there are, because we're, we're putting them in here. Right? So when we, when we run these synths, we're creating this VCO which isn't getting any information from upstream. It just has some default frequency, but it goes into the VCF, which then goes into the VCA, which goes into the reverb. And uh, I'm going to be prepared with this because we have, I'm not exactly sure how loud this is going to be. It might, it's going to be like, you know, full-ish amplitude, but I did a little sound check. So I'm just going to uh, run this. Yeah, let me turn that down. Right. And already we see stuff happening on the, yeah, so let's, let's see. We actually have a lot of stuff here. Let's see if I can make this look nice. Yeah. So again, at the top, two hardware outputs. It's our sawtooth wave and it's a look a little wiggly, which is the reverb. Inputs, that's me talking. Uh, and then we have the raw VCO signal, full amplitude, just doing its thing. Then it goes into the VCF. So this is a filtered version. The cutoff frequency by default is maximum, so it's not really doing much of anything. Uh, and then it goes through the VCA, which I've just set to have kind of a lower amplitude here, right? We can zero that and see how channel, what is there? One, two, three, four, five, six is, is changing, right? right? So this is us turning the knob on the VCA, just lowering the voltage of the whatever's controlling the amplitude. And then it gets passed from the VCA uh, into the reverb, and the reverb writes it out to uh, 0 and 1. 
as for our control buses, uh, we have the LFO on control bus zero. It's a sine wave just doing its thing. And then every now and then you'll see these little spikes on control bus one. That is the uh, trigger, that's the impulse generator. Once per second, it's just making a little spike. And, and none of these, con so basically we haven't done any patch cables really yet, except for the, the VCO to the VCF to the VCA to the reverb. So um, uh, let me just turn this down so we can really hear ourselves think. It's a, I know it's kind of intense, sawtooth wave. Uh, the first thing I'm doing, this, this is like a new, a new super collider concept, but there is a, an object called control spec. And this is a utility class that lets you easily map numbers from a range of zero and one to something else and back. Uh, and this is really nice because if you just want to think in terms of everything from zero to one, which you basically are doing at an analog synthesizer, and also whenever you design GUIs, the graphical user interface in SuperCollider, all the knobs and faders by default just zero to one. So you can create a custom range built into a control spec, and then you can use that control spec to map back and forth. Uh, and as a convenience, there's a bunch of built-in uh, control specs for different things like decibels and frequency and MIDI notes and, and whatever. So one of them is, and you get those defaults by saying the name of a symbol as spec. So this returns a control spec. The alternate range is 20 to 20,000. It's exponential. These are like default values and like a label if you're using it for a, a graphical interface. But so now we can say stuff like um, freak, uh, freak, where's the cue? Spec dot map zero becomes 20. 1 becomes 20,000. 0.5 is exponentially in between those two. So we, basically, this is the, the value coming from the bus, and then we can turn it into an appropriate frequency value. We can also do the opposite by unmapping. So unmapping, if we want a frequency of 440, the correct nominal, uh, normalized value is 0.447. So this, that's, that's why I've created this. Uh, freak spec device because like I might want to set the frequency to a specific frequency, but I don't want to have to do the math myself Yeah All right, so let's let's turn this back on and When I bring this up, I'm gonna tune the cutoff frequency of the VCF and again This is a zero to one thing and I think it's like a little bit less important to have concrete frequency values because you can just kind of hear the quality of the filter and you know so for example Yeah, turn this up a little bit. Let's go back here and see what's happening here. So you can see we're now controlling the Moog FF Ugen, and that is creating a low pass filter effect. And so we see those changes on uh, bus five. And then here, here is me just like, uh, you know, setting the frequency to some random values. Let's, let's raise this a little bit. So we can say there's 400 hertz. You can also hear the reverb a little bit. Uh, and what, what was I doing a second ago? It's just like doing some random stuff here. This is a random value from 40 to 400, and it's rounded to the nearest multiple of 40. So this is like, I, I don't know, I don't know what this would be in terms of modules. It's like a, like a random voltage generator that could be triggered manually or something, right? Okay. Uh, you can also hear the reverb. So we have this reverb effect. Uh, we'll do this, do this. So if we set the reverb to be real high, if we change the frequency, it's much easier to hear. Versus this. Or like almost completely off. Give me a low one, low one. There we go, okay. <laughs> yeah, almost sounds like the real thing. 
Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start using bus mapping, using the techniques we saw earlier. So here's the first thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna map the, you know, the, the modulator input of the VCA to the output of the envelope module. Okay, so we're taking the output of our envelope module, plugging it in to the modulator input on the VCA, and we're gonna hear nothing because the envelope is listening for triggers to know when to make its shape. And right now that it's just using a control rate argument, which we can set manually, right? But because it's KR, it's, it's stuck at a value of one. So we have to zero it and go back here, right? But I did that on purpose because we're gonna, you know, map the trigger argument of the envelope to the output of the trigger module, which is down here. We just say set the trigger argument of the env synth to be the whatever's on the trigger bus and uh the frequency I, I don't know what the default frequency is for that trigger one yeah so we'll just hear one envelope per second here yeah and we can make that lower so we're just again turning the frequency of the trigger module down the i, I gave the envelope release and attack parameters so I think it's by default, it might be five. Yeah. yeah. Raising the attack. I kind of like that short attack though. Okay, and now we have this LFO, which is, uh, I think just doing zero to one, right? Oh, see, so we, we now have our envelope because now the envelope is connected to the trigger. So every time we get a trigger, it's fed to the envelope and we can see the envelope signal on control bus two. So we're gonna map the LFO here. Let's, I'm gonna do this and this just to give ourselves a little piece, temporary peace of mind. Um, wait a minute. Oh yeah, okay, that, never mind. Yeah, I, I can't do both, right? This, this is, um, uh, you know, once, once I did this, I've disconnected it from the envelope bus, right? Because I've set the amplitude to be a hard value here. We can bring it back like this. And then, yeah, so then it's back. Okay, but just gonna, we're just gonna unplug that and just uh, think for a second. The, then we have, uh, what you can tell what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna say, let's, let's get the LFO to control the cutoff frequency of the VCF. Um, and let's, just, let's just do it. Yeah, and so no amplitude modulation right now, just kind of steady, steady uh, amplitude level. But we can connect the triggers. We, we can map the um, the uh, VCA modulator input back to the envelope. And nice short release. And map the triggers and set them to be four. It's a little bit much reverb, maybe. And we can set the frequency of the LFO to be more slow. It's down here. And yeah, and it gets it gets pretty low because the the sine wave is going from zero to one, and the way that the filter maps that is from twenty to fifteen thousand. Um, so, so if the if the fundamental is like 500 or something, there's going to be a significant part of the LFO cycle where we just don't hear anything. It just kind of goes away, which is why I gave myself these arguments, right? So I don't I want to take the mapping and I want to just scooch it up a little bit uh, to something like uh, um, 500. Let's speed this up. Thank you. 
And you know, we could also uh, PCO dot set freak LFO dot as map. LFO, oh, sorry, bus dot LFO dot as map. Let's see what this does. Oh, wait a minute. Did I break it? Maybe I broke it. <laughs> no, no, it's still there. It's still there. Uh, like I thought it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, what do I need to do here? Oh, I think probably something like this. No? Uh, VC. Oh, dot set. I don't know. <laughs> uh, what did I change? Let's just set this back to, I don't know, 1,000. The frequency is very high. Oh, you know why? It's because um, I'm, I'm forgetting that I have this between 0 and 1. Yeah, I should have been using my control spec or something. Yeah. Uh, what do I want? What do I want? BCF and set. Let's see if I can. Uh, end this elegantly. Frantically hit command period. Okay, <laughs> just in case something happens. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it goes a long way when I actually prepare my lectures <laughs> instead of just <laughs> making stuff up as I go along. All right. Uh, so I hope that I hope that was um, that my goal here was to sort of show off buses and routing and signal flow from a couple different perspectives here. I will. Um, cook up a, a, a short homework. I think what I'm going to have you do for this homework is um, build three synth thefts, you know, a source, like a, an echo and a reverb. And you can use built-in, you know, reverb plugins, and, or uh, not plugins, but UGENs. And, and then just set up um, a couple different arrangements on the node tree, like one where it goes source to A to B, source to B to A, source to A to B simultaneously, and then mixed together just to kind of, you know, test your understanding of assembling synths on the tree. And the plan is next week we will talk about MIDI. And that will, that will actually tie into control buses, I think, a little bit, which, is, which will be nice. And then I also have graphical user interfaces on, on the agenda. And then with the time that we have left, hopefully some live coding stuff and yeah, and transitioning into thinking about final projects. I hope you're already starting to think about, you know, rough ideas for what you want to do for your final project. And well, if, if not, then you should. You should start thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I did review a lot of stuff. Okay. Well, you're you're more than welcome to stick around. Uh, if, uh, if you want to ask some questions about what we covered or just, just chat. Right? So we'll move on with MIDI next week. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you.